now available on Tata Sky channel number 526. Hello and welcome you're watching Property Hotline with me Kavita Krishnan on India's first property channel Magiprix now. Today we are answering questions related to home finance with Karthik Javeri he is the founder and director of Transcend Consulting India Private Limited. Karthik welcome to the show. Thank you. We have Kem Shah who's called in. Uh Mr Shah go ahead tell us what's your question. Ha uh, hello. Yes Mr Shah tell us what's your question. Yeah. Uh, uh, th- there is something like called a disbursement debt, mm-hmm. loan disbursement debt, and the uh, and second thing is check preparation, and third thing is uh, issue of the check. Mm. Now I have seen that while issuing uh, or giving the loan, uh, bank is taking around four or five days while issuing the check. So interest rate should be count- counted on home loan from the date of disbursement or from the date of check or from the date of issue of the check. It's a very that interesting question. question to begin the show with, uh, Karthik. From when is interest calculated? You know what is a disbursement if the check is not given on that date? Then it is not really disbursement, hmm. isn't it? So, Mr. Shah, in my view, it is a very straightforward thing. The disbursement date and the check issue date should be the same. Now. it's a secondary fact when the client actually goes or receives a check and when he actually goes and banks it or when the developer banks it you know depending on what is the situation sometimes the check is given in the name of the developer sometimes you know if you are taking a loan much later in the day then lot of times the payment is made to you but the point is from a lender's perspective the date on which i write the check and i hand it over to you or the date which is known as my disbursement date logically the interest should be calculated from the disbursement date but then karthik logically in that case your date of disbursement and the date when the bank issues the check should be the same should be the same absolutely it has to be the same now in your specific case how is this different uh, difference come by and the 29th february was a uh, was a working day and therefore there should not have been any reason why they did not give you the check otherwise see the fundamental question is what is a disburse what is the sense of a disbursement date if the check is dated 4 days ahead then that is the disbursement date and, and not the disbursement date as the original uh, as originally told to you so i think you have a very very strong reason to go back to them and see 2 3 days is not going to make a difference in terms of interest uh, per se but you know what for this one reason do not stop any of your payments or anything please go ahead with them this is a small query they can always fix the system they could always fix the process it's a very very valid and a pertinent query that you have and it should be the same date or it should be the date on which so, the check so is written even what if you're saying is if he say if he approaches a bank and he t- points out this uh, discrepancy to them correct. the bank will probably uh, set it right and uh, will they then Uh, reimburse uh, that Absolutely. money to his account. Yeah, so they will just reimburse the money. They will make the adjustment into his loan account, and the interest calculation for that month would pretty much take care of it. So technically, now in because your check is dated second of March, technically you should pay interest from the second of March, which should be actually the disbursement date and not the disbursement date on twenty ninth February. So I think it's very very valid that your question is absolutely uh, sacrosanct. Very valid, very pertinent yeah. point, and what's interesting is that you. Sp- spotted that discrepancy True. which which is what we keep saying on this channel here and on property hotline in fact that you need to be more proactive whether it is buying a house or whether it's paying the taxes on that house or whether it is financing that house so what if it is a bank that is giving you the loan ensure that you go through each and everything that is printed on that piece of paper and on the check that is given to you next we have uh, subhash who's called in subhash tell us what's your question yeah good afternoon ma'am Hi tell me what's your question My question ma'am I am staying in a rented accommodation in Delhi Mhm for which like I am paying uh, around 2500 rupees of rent every month Mhm plus along with this I had bought a small flat 2 uh, years back Okay uh for which I took a housing loan uh, to the extent of say around 40 lakh rupees Mhm So till last year my office was passing on Uh, like interest, uh, what do you call it? Is it interest rebate on that housing loan? Interest rebate up to two lakh rupees, uh, rebate uh, benefit mm. on that housing loan part to me till last year. That is number one, and number two, they were considering my HRA part also. Okay. The okay. Thing. But somehow this year, like uh, when I uh, gave my papers for income tax 
saving the days of showing income tax. Right, right, uh, right. Yeah. Uh, they told me because since this house which I have taken on loan because it's a small house where I myself cannot shift. Yes. Uh, they say I cannot avail both the things together. Like I cannot. So uh, now your office is telling you that you cannot avail tax deduction on the rent you pay and the uh, uh, EMIs that you have been paying, right? That's very right, ma'am. That's right. Uh, uh, Karthik, what do you say? Does he have a case over here? Can he avail uh, both the deductions at the same time because he's not living in the house that he's actually bought? Yes, absolutely. Uh, there seems to be no sort of change in laws or anything of that sort. You know, maybe uh, one needs to just go back and speak to a slightly higher authority if their case uh, requires you to do so, Subhash. See, it's very clear. Until last year, you were doing it and, and, and as far as you are concerned, because you are paying rent and you have an HRA component in your salary, so therefore you, that should go into the HRA component based on whatever is the rules of the HRA and you know the amount of rent that could be actually taken away as, an, as a deduction. And on the other hand, buying a self-occupied property, which is your house that you have bought on loan and for which you are paying an EMI and for which you are getting an interest benefit and interest rebate, etc. So that is a completely different story. So that is your self-occupied property, you've got that. And the other property is the property in which it does not belong to you. You're paying a rent to somebody and HRA rules provide for this. So I do not see why should uh, your current company and the same department actually have a differential view on this thing. Maybe if they have a differential view, send it to us and we will investigate and revert back to you. But as far as I think right now, this is absolutely okay to go with. Right. You should get the benefit. So Subhash, essentially go back to your office, speak to whoever is the account head, the finance head and tell them that this is the problem. And uh, technically, you are uh, you can you are entitled to deduction on both on HRA and on the EMI that you pay. So go and claim that deduction. And if not, uh, then ask them what is the difference? Why is it that you're not doing it? And get back to us if you get stuck. Okay. Um, uh, you know, before we move on, just for clarification yep. for our viewers, right. Karthik, if you could just tell us this. Uh, now, a lot of uh, people like Subhash, for instance, uh, uh, you know, have their homes in the same city. Uh, they bought a house in the same city, but you know they probably don't want to live where because houses are so unaffordable, especially in Mumbai. Sure. What you can afford to buy is probably in the periphery, Correct. and you want to live on rent closer to your workplace. Absolutely. So, even people like that who have both the houses, the ones that they rent and the ones that they bought in the same city, even they are entitled to this deduction, right? See, absolutely, they are entitled to it. The reason is house rent allowance. The name itself is self-explanatory. You are getting an allowance for house rent. Whether you have a house in this city, some other city, some other part of the world, there is no connection. It's a completely separate, isolated case. So there is a section under the section which is related to salaries in the Income Tax Act, which very clearly says, if you have this component as a part of your salary, if your employer is giving you this as a benefit, and if you are actually paying a rent to somebody, then by all means you and can in you fact, know, claim. I think Subhash should uh, press his case further because Precisely. HRA has been increased in the the HRA exemption has been increased in the budget. Could you just uh, take us through uh, the numbers again? Uh, what deductions are available? Now, now that deduction is into a different section. You see, mm. but the regular HRA that was available to you, uh, you know, st stays the way it is. Typically, this HRA is more or less in terms of 50% of your basic, and you know, the standard calculation applies. So, depending on the amount of rent that you are doing, you know, you know, total HRA paid minus 10% of the actual rent paid. I mean, all those rules are absolutely sacrosanct. They stay the way are. So the, they stay the way they are. So therefore, go back and please apply for this thing. And whether or not you have a property in Bombay somewhere else, if you have another property in Panvel or you know wherever it could be, that's absolutely fine. You are servicing a loan and for which you're getting an right. interest Karthik, benefit. Karthik, bringing you back to the budget. So what yeah. has changed in the budget as far as HRA is concerned? No, so in, in terms of the change that we've seen in the HRA budget, we have seen that there is a provision for people who earn below a certain level of income. Right? And they have a separate section under which they are getting that HRA benefit. So that is a different rental benefit that you are paying for the home. Versus this is your HRA benefit under the salary. Mm. So therefore, this section hasn't changed at all. Okay, so that's an additional yeah. uh, uh, deduction that the government has given you starting the next financial year, which is 1st of April onwards. Uh, now we have a uh, question that's coming through email. Dave has written in. He says that he wants to buy a villa, but the developers say that he doesn't have to pay pre-EMI on this. Now the builder wants him to pay 6.5 lakh rupees as advance and the property costs 58 lakh rupees. Position he's saying is in May 2017. The developer says he doesn't have to pay pre-EMI before position. 
Now he wants to know whether this is the advance that the advance that he's supposed to be paying. Is that the 20% down payment? It's not 20%, it's around 10% that he's paying, 10% of the home cost. Yeah, about but 10, it's still a substantial amount that correct. he's paying. Yeah, about 10 to 15% is what he's mm. paying. So he's taking this thing as an advance from you. Now, there could be a lot of assumptions here based on the information that we have really with us. So Prima Facie, what he's trying to do is either it's a scheme wherein you're paying some amount of money right now, booking a property, and then he will sort of construct the property and at the end of it, he will give you... So he's himself sort of taking some amount of advance from you, making the property and then, you know, like the 2080 schemes, genuine ones, where you pay the bulk of the money at the time of your possession. So that is one option here. The other option which we can possibly imagine this thing to be is that you might be doing some further documentation with the builder and as a result of it, he might be actually applying for the loan on your credentials. So although you are not paying any pre-EMI interest or any EMI of any sort, the fact is that you've paid some money as a down payment, rest of the money is a loan which he is taking, obviously the lender is giving the money to him and he is paying the pre-EMI interest, so therefore you are absolved of your responsibility to do it. But remember two things, one if he defaults or something goes wrong then it's your liability in that case which we've already explained on the show a lot of times in the past and the second thing is irrespective of whatever you do remember you need to have your agreement executed so you know while you've given the money to him that's absolutely good but just make sure that you actually get your agreement you get your registration of the agreement done so that in case of any problem going further you have a very very solid document which stands in your favor so just make sure that you've got your agreement uh, sorted out Karthik also uh, say he does plan to go ahead with this I mean uh, it, it does I mean any of these schemes where you have to pay a bit now and then uh, you know, pay the rest later is something that you need to take with, you know, kilos of salt, not just a pinch of salt. For that matter, there's, you need to exercise a lot of caution. But still, say that Dave does plan to go ahead with this. That's uh, right. Tell me this, uh, then should he uh, insist that the developer, uh, you know, probably settle, uh, settle with the developer for a construction linked plan? So he has some say in how the money is going instead of letting the bank uh, disburse the money upfront to the developer. You know, most banks anyways will pay according to milestones to the oh. developer because you see when the developer launches a project, most banks are not just happy to fund him straight away. Uh, even if the even if the developer is taking a direct finance from as a construction finance from a lender, even in that case, it is done normally on a milestone basis as in terms of you get this money, you do this much achievement. Once you reach a certain threshold and it is certified by architects, etc., then you take the next tranche of money. Normally, that's exactly the way it works. So most unlikely that they will take away a huge chunk on your name and your credentials. And all said and done, even in your agreement, there should be a clause of a milestone based payments or a construction linked payment saying that once the plinth is done or the you know x level of slabs are achieved or what is the percentage that you need to pay each slab so all that should be very very clearly mentioned and also the fact that you don't have to pay it but he is going to either borrow the money on your name and your credentials from the lender of course it's your responsibility to pay if he defaults but knowing that he's taking money in bits and pieces as the building is developing then that's nice yeah and all the clauses that you put in the agreement will not safeguard you if he defaults because it is your civil score that then will be on the line your civil record Correct. that will be on the line and that is something that you need to keep in mind when you get into schemes like this we have ashish who's called in now ashish tell us what's your question yeah hey hey good afternoon sir Hi, yeah. good afternoon. Uh, Hi. Yeah. So basically, uh, I'm just looking for a home loan uh, and I've just gone to the competition in the market which is available. So people are talking about the SB gain account. That is, the SBI is offering a loan. Uh, so if I go for a loan of 40 lakh rupees, uh, then uh, and if I have an FD with them of, say, 30 lakh rupees, they will only charge me on that 10 lakh rupees of the loan amount. And if I keep that uh, 30 lakhs with them, they will not charge me on total 40 lakhs, but only 10 lakhs will be charged. So can, I can utilize my that. 2 lakh rupees of income tax bracket of uh, interest on the home loan as much as I only want and the rest can be saved. So is it really valuable or how is it? How really it works about, sir? Okay. Okay, that's an interesting one there yes. and that's also an interesting scheme by SBI to ensure that their deposit customers don't go anywhere else. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So, you know, Ashish, there are a lot of things that are uh, components of this question. Now, uh, we'll, we'll try and break each one of them to explain to you. Number one, this is a great product. Number two, SBI is not the only player who does this. There are a couple of other banks also, such as Citibank, Standard Chartered, HSBC, I think Axis, DBS, lots of them actually have this kind of a product. Now, what this product essentially does is, it gives you a home loan account, which like any other lender does. Along with that account, they also open a fixed, uh, a current account for you. Sorry, not a fixed, a current account for you. 
Now that current account is linked to your home loan account. What that means is the day on which you've borrowed 40 lakhs, so your, your home loan account will say minus 40. But because that account is linked to a current account, for example, if you kept the 30 lakhs in that current account and not your fixed deposit, okay, I'm being very specific. It is not linked with your fixed deposit. That amount of fixed deposit you'll have to transfer into this new current account, okay? On that you will not earn any interest because it's a current account. So that current account, when that current account is going to hold your 30 lakhs, then for that particular day, you will be charged an interest which is calculated only for the 10 lakhs for that day. Let us then further assume that you kept that money into that current account for 15 days. And after that, you withdrew that money for whatever purpose you wanted. So for that first 15 days, the interest calculation will be on 40 minus 30, which is 10 lakhs. And the day you withdraw that money, then the interest calculation is on your entire 40 lakhs. At the end of the month, whatever is your total interest payable is then charged to your account. So it works like a beautiful situation where if you have any surplus money, you could actually park it into this current account. The advantage of this account is that it reduces your interest rate dramatically over the years. And thereafter, you also have the facility to use your money the way you like. Example, you get a bonus of 5 lakhs from your company if, as a salary. Just park it there till the time you decide what to do with it. Or if you've redeem, redeemed some investment or some maturity of some insurance policy or some gift, till the time you figure out what to do with it. Now what to do with it, just park it in the current account. That way you save a lot of interest. You get your salary credit into it, you are not going to spend it on the same day. So you use that money over the whole month. So you get a lot of benefit that way. And that's the way you should use this account. You don't earn any interest on that, please remember. So your fixed deposit will have to be closed. Your account will have to move here. So, but, but, the, but then very quickly, Karthi, yep. we need to get into a break. Very quickly tell me this. How advisable is it if I have, you know, saved over the years, I have a substantial amount of money in fixed deposit. Yes. How advisable is it to pull it out and put it in this current account? Because a home loan is something that I'll be paying off for the next 20 years. Uh, say 15, 20 years at least. So True. that's 15 True. to 20 years where I'm not really earning interest on that money. Correct. And that money is not working for me. No, it is, it's going to work for you beautifully. The reason is, if your money is in a fixed deposit, you're earning about, say, 8%, 8.5% minus the tax, you're going to be at about 5%. Versus here, by parking this money here, you are saving the home loan interest, which is itself at 9 or 10%. Mm. So what is saved is earned. So if you use that logic, the money that is sitting in your current account, you're actually offsetting that 9% of interest. And if you do a pre-tax calculation, then it's as much as you're earning about 10 to 11% or 12% on your money, which you which is parked in that current account. So it's a wonderful thing to do. And in fact, you should even get your salary credits or your business income credits into that current account. And that way you can maximize the period of your uh, interest payment. And actually your tenure for paying the home loan will come down dramatically. Well, so finally, that is one financial product that is actually doing what it uh, sets out to do. It's called max gain and it looks like it's giving, uh, you know, the investor or the borrower in this uh, play in this over here, you know, a lot of gains over here it does make a lot of financial sense to put your money in that current account. So if you have substantial fixed deposits, let them work for you. We have a question that's coming from SS Verma. He's written in through email. Now, he says that since we are expecting a rate cut from the RBI, will it make a difference whether he makes a partial repayment of his home loan before or after the rate cut? Karthik, I wish that the banks were as prompt in <laughs> passing on the uh, you know benefit of the rate cut. You know, as prompt as our uh, callers and our uh, people are sending in questions, expecting their interest rates to actually go down substantially. Correct. Uh, and for Mr. Varma, uh, you know, what happens is your interest rate has got actually nothing to do with uh, the amount of interest you are actually going to pay prima facie with related to prepayments, okay? Uh, or rather, let me put it this way, that prepayment has got nothing to do with the interest rate cut. Prepayment is a factor of when you have that extra money and when you want to go ahead and pay that money and thereby reduce the total interest outgo. What the interest rate cut will do for you is that if the interest rate is cut, then the corresponding cut, exactly like the way uh, you've been told, if that is passed on to you through your lender, then you get a slightly uh, lower rate of interest to pay and as a result of it, you will save a lot of money, uh, prima facie in terms of uh, the interest that you are going to pay. 
Okay. Now, should you base your prepayment decision on that? Absolutely not. Your prepayment decision should be on the most judicious use of your money. Sometimes it might pay off to actually go and invest that money somewhere else and earn maybe 14-15% on that while your home loan is at, four, at, at about 9 or 9.5%. Once you made substantial profit on that investment, maybe use that a profit to make a prepayment and thereby you are going to reduce your total interest outgo. If you have that bonus and if you don't want to make any investments, if that money is absolutely surplus for you and if you have adequately you know, done investments for all other financial needs of yours and you don't have any need for that money, then by all means go ahead and make a prepayment. Because remember, prepayment is like a one-way street. You make it, you can't really pull it back unless you take a fresh loan then. So you have to use your cash flows very, very judiciously. And you know now whether or not the interest rate goes up or down is a completely different matter. That will actually you know do a plus or minus onto your. Uh... You know, and speaking of interest rates, yeah. Karthik, we know that from April first, the way the banks actually calculate how much interest to uh, levy on the loan that they're giving you, or the interest, how much they need to pay out on the deposits that you keep with them. That calculation is set to change. They are going to use a new formula and uh, call the marginal cost of funds. Now we are told that that will ensure. Uh, that you know the rate cuts that RBI announces actually passes on much faster to the customer and uh, we can actually benefit much faster. Uh, could you just explain how that is going to work because April 1st is like next week. Absolutely. So that's a wonderful thing that has happened for us. Now what's going to happen is every time the bank is giving you money or bank is lending you money so to say, it is also borrowing it from somewhere. Now that borrowing cost of that money is obviously not uniform because if let's say you had taken a home loan in 2009 then the cost of that money would have been something. Now, if you've taken a loan in say 2014, then the banks had to pay some sort of a cost to borrow that money. That is different. So now based on whatever is their marginal cost of borrowing, if there is a half percent cut in the rate, you should get that benefit. This ordinarily addresses the issue where, you know, the new borrowers used to get a lesser rate and older borrowers used to have, you know, they would have had to continue at higher rates. And to bring some sort of transparency and parity amongst all the borrowers, this is a measure which has been implemented. So if you are paying 11%, then for a simplistic calculation rule of thumb, you can assume, for example, the bank's cost is 9%. So the bank borrowed that money at 9 and has lent it to you at 11, 2% is their spread. So if the rate goes down mm. for your particular funds, then your particular fund, if it goes down by a quarter percent, then your lending rate also should go down by a quarter percent correspondingly. So that is exactly how this so, whole mechanism so essentially is Essentially, net-net, what Karthik is trying to tell you is that uh, if you have a home loan that you have been repaying over the last, say, 10, 15 years, that is, if you're an old, you're an existing borrower of a bank, you should, you will also start get, getting the benefit of any rate cut that the RBI does here on. However, for that, you need to be a little proactive. You will have to go and speak to your bank and ensure that you your loan is reset. The interest rates are reset. So remember to do that. Starting 1st of April, you can go to your bank, walk in and ask them to reprice your home loan so that you get the benefit of rate cuts. Uh, we now have Rajesh who sent in a question through email. Uh, he says that he has a home loan of 90 lakh rupees for 20 years. He just finished a year since he took the loan. Now he wants to make a bullet payment of 5 lakh rupees. He wants to know that when he does do the bullet payment, should he keep the tenure unchanged or the EMI unchanged? What is better from an interest payout perspective? Where can one pay lesser amount of interest? So the direct answer to your question is that you keep your EMI steady. Do not let your EMI go down under any circumstances. The bank actually wants you to reduce your EMI because maybe you know that is space to get another EMI or maybe from a cash flow point of view you'll have to shell out lesser. You see the longer a loan continues the more interest you will pay. That's straight away a basic logic. The shorter the time you want to grow you have to play with your EMI, you know, keep the EMI same or if there is a possibility to increase the EMI as your salary increases, if you can increase it by 5% every year, fabulous, go to your lender and say I want to increase my EMI, automatically your tenure will keep coming down. A prepayment will also pretty much reduce your payout time, your interest will go down but keep your EMI steady, that's something that you should do and for your specific case, I think if you just make a 5 lakh sort of a prepayment. Uh, it, uh, you know, at, at whatever point of time, you might actually save up about 15 to 16 lakhs in terms of interest cost. I'm just assuming your loan is at 10%. My, my, it might be less or might be higher. But I'm just making to up. 16 lakhs is huge saving. Huge. Also, Karthik, he said that the, he's just finished one year of the That's right. home loan. Which means he's in the initial period and he's most of 90% of his loan is probably going towards interest payments. Should he take
make, I mean, if he's come into 5 lakh rupees, which he's giving as bullet payment, I'm just assuming here that he's probably uh, got into a higher cash flow, you know. So Absolutely. if that is the case, should he then ask the bank to probably start uh, paying, uh, start, uh, you know, taking more of a principal uh, repayment on the home loan rather than just the in in interest payment payout? Uh, you know, you see, Kavita, that won't actually happen. They will not do okay. that kind of a movement. But what you can do is you can take a double benefit. Now, mm -hmm. what see, on your 90 lakh loan, understand that over the next 20 years, you will pay about 1 crore and 20 as interest. Now, I've assumed 10% as interest just for calculation purpose. So because it's only one year and you're going to make this 5 lakh prepayment, you're saving about 15, 16 lakhs in terms of your interest straight away. So having said that, what you should now do is, if you are going to make this prepayment, you can actually go back and tell the bank that, look, I earn a little bit more, so let me also pay you a little more EMI. So automatically your tenure, which is, which is likely to come down to seven years, might actually get hit down a little more and you might come down to maybe 15 or 16 years. So that is how you can you know, manage this whole loan. At the same time, if you find another bank who's giving you yet another uh, lower rate of interest, maybe you can think about shifting also. You know, right. given that the difference so, is about 1%. So net Lots net of things try to do. and increase that EMI that you're paying. Yes. Uh, we have Ganesh's question that's coming through email. Uh, Karthik, we need to be very quick on this. Our last sure. question. Uh, he says he's a government servant, wants to know if it is ideal to invest in real estate by taking loan from his organization. Uh, how much returns can he expect on such an investment? Is it preferable to invest in real estate or in FDs or PPF? Okay, now, so again, lots of things here. Uh, it is a very good idea if you want to buy the property, take a loan on it because that way you are leveraging and therefore you can buy the property that you want. Now, a property investment historically can be compared with a stock market investing because that's where the returns are comparable and at parity. You cannot compare with a with fixed a deposit of PPF. If you do a comparison, then any day real estate or stock market is way better. So therefore, you need to put your comparison proper. If you want to buy this loan, if you're getting a, you know, a pretty good rate of interest from your department or from your company, please go ahead, do buy it because your property itself will appreciate, real estate appreciates at 14-15%. So that is going to happen. Your loan might be much lower than that. So therefore, it's a great idea. A great idea. And also remember that deposit interest rates are generally on the decline which means the interest that you'll get on your FD or on your PPF is also going down. Right, with that, it's a wrap on this edition of Property Hotline. Thank you very much, Karthik. And if you have any feedback or suggestions that you'd like to share, any questions that you'd want to ask, do get in touch with us through email, through Facebook, Twitter, on our website, or simply call us live. Thank you very much for watching Property Hotline. Keep watching Magic Bricks now. You can watch live TV on our website mbnow.in. Find us on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash magicbricksnow. And don't forget to click the like button. You can also follow us on Twitter at magicbricksnow. To stay updated with all our programming, hit the subscribe button on our YouTube channel by logging on to youtube.com forward slash magicbricksnow.